Porites falls under the coral species. They are commonly found in the marine nerdy zone and the intertidal zone where sunlight can reach them. Porites is under the genus of hard coral which is characterized by its finger-like morphology. Members of this genus are known for its widely spaced salices, a well-developed wall reticulum and head shape which is bilateral symmetry. Porites, particularly Porites lustia, always form microatoms which is a circular colony of coral. Something special about this genus is that it's also known as the host of Christmas tree worms. Porites reproduce by broadcasting or spawning its egg and sperm into the water to be fertilized. As one of coral species, Porites also have the similar feeding habitat as other corals. They are filter feeders and the presence of Zuzantele also helps providing food for Porites itself. For further information, we meet one of lecturer of University of Malaysia Terengganu from School of Marine and Environmental Science, Dr. Lee Jenny, whom her expertise is Porites Coral. Uh, corals are actually not an animals that move around so they couldn't move around to take their food but then you will see them actually they have small uh, animals in the platypus that they can catch the food and they also filter food and in the same time they also have uh, zooxanthellae cells that live within the coral that actually provides food for the coral itself Corals, porites, for example, the big massive one, doesn't provide directly food to the human, but they provide shelter to other organisms that, uh, for example, fishes or other clams that actually, in the whole coral itself, uh, provide all the environment for other organisms for human beings, including fishing. Of course. Yeah, they do exist, especially the zooxanthellae that live within the cells, so they provide the nutrients. But for other organisms, I think um, didn't really provide directly, but it's just that it's in the ecosystem that they shelter each other in the coral reef itself. Uh, these kind of corals are usually uh, mistaken as rock because most of the people who use the coral reef would think the massive corals are rocks. So people would step on it and kill the polyps on the top. Uh, they are actually endangered because of climate change uh, related to their growth response. So for example, when temperature increase or decrease suddenly, uh, in a very short term, they will have bleaching or maybe too uh, high light intensity also they will have coral bleaching but most of the corals recover throughout the time uh, but for long term for the past 30 years they will see decline of coral growth means they are not that healthy anymore so when we say about endangered they are crit critically endangered in some area where they are highly used at shallow water where people step on it but uh, not for short term short term they survive quite quite so as the living things in the coral reef itself, uh, a lot of the coral reefs are being protected under the marine protected area. So a lot of federal regulation or state regulations that uh, provides an ecosystem that are actually protected from human being. Uh, but generally for the whole world, I think it really belongs to the government and federal justification where does it goes so from protection I think they are very protected for these past few years because a lot of conservation issues are coming up but we don't see any we don't see people really taking action on protecting the corals because they don't directly give inputs uh, especially the porites 
people don't take and eat so they don't see it as a value to the ecosystem or to human being so the protection is there it's just that the implementation is not that uh, the implementation is not that not the what to say uh, not not that strong yet if you want to know more about coral reef, buy this book <laughs>